Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 249 of Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to see you. Great to have you here. Hey, find us online at www.category5.tv. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Hillary Rumble. Keeping it real over here. Like I always do. How you been? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it's nice having you around these days. Thanks. It's been yeah. it's been nice doing, you know, a couple back-to-back episodes. It's yeah. been pretty nice. It's like the Hillary like kind of early start to the summer. Yeah. Yeah, your overdose of Hillary. Yeah. And then you'll be sick of me, so then you can take a well, break. And then she'll be away for a while with the whole <laughs> camp thing coming up That's in the true. summer. That's got to that be starting is. soon. Yep. Uh, the chaos begins very shortly. You've read her bio on our website, category5.tv, so you know that through the summer she works at a, uh, a deaf camp doing, mm. uh, I guess, do you do sign language and everything with oh, the kids? Oh, yeah. And, yeah, we've uh, got. Lots of fun games. and it's games all the time. Yeah. Fun all the time. Yeah. With sign language. Awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. It is. So very nice to cool. be able to do that. <laughs> Yeah, so you won't see me for a while, but that's okay. So we got our, our three-week fix. <laughs> True say. Yeah. There's lots coming up today in the show, so I hope you're all glued to your screen because coming up in the newsroom, Twitter's outage on Thursday was a result of a cascading bug in the Twitter code. Wait, Twitter was down? The Twitter machine <laughs> I kid. was down. <laughs> Google built a computerized brain, and they're looking to use it for kittens. I don't know what that oh. means, but I'm very intrigued. <laughs> I'm very intrigued. Hmm. Additionally, sites such as the Pirate Bay are no longer blocked in India. Hmm. And lastly, Google Maps will soon feature England and Wales waterways as possible travel routes. Stick around, because these wow. stories are coming up later in the show. First there was walking, now there's swimming. No, I presume they're talking about ferries and boats and stuff. I assume so. <laughs> Not clocking cool. your uh, kilometers or whatever yeah, from really. one point to another. How do you measure the time? Yeah, it depends on the tides. True say. The positioning of the moon. <laughs> hey, it's uh, Tuesday the... Did I mention the date? It's the 26th of June. It is. 2012. I learned the hard way that I always need to say right off the top of You're the right. show what the date is. Because otherwise, point. three years from now, I guarantee you, somebody on YouTube is going to say, this is like old news, man. They're like, yeah. yeah I know. That was from 2012, and it's now <laughs> 2037. <laughs> Good point. Glad we cleared that up. Yeah. Also, <laughs> to clear this up, in case you had any confusion, today's show is going to rock as well because we will be learning how to recover photos from your camera cards if they've been deleted or maybe the mm. cards like crashed and went really funky that and happens. your file systems become unreadable we're gonna fix it using free software free how can this be hillary you mean a free lesson know. with free software to freely recover data from your flashcards sounds, sounds fantastic too good to be true uh-huh so stick around it's going to be great. It's going to be great. We've got viewer testimonials to look at tonight. Thank you for sending in your viewer testimonials. Also, I just want to give a great big shout out and thank you to those of you uh, viewers who are actually donating to the show. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you know or not, but we, we do receive the occasional donation through our website. Um, you can do so at cat5.tv slash C, the letter C if you like. Uh, but uh, we also have a couple of people who give on a regular basis. Every single month, they uh, they donate to the show. And uh, that really helps us offset expenses. Uh, as you know, it, it does cost money to, to run the show. And mm -hmm. I'm excited because we're actually going to be moving. We are. I was talking to Hillary before the show. Um, Category 5 is going to be moving into a new studio space. And, uh, and, of course, donations really, you know, we use donations... First and foremost, to help pay the bills, internet mm -hmm. fees, 
are, sure. are of course one of our highest bills are you know our internet service our bandwidth our ability to host the files and do all that kind of stuff we have just recently yeah. started uh, distributing our, our video files within mainland China which uh, as I mentioned on a previous show does uh, incur some additional expense with no compensation from advertising uh, as far as that goes because we have to actually turn off all the ads on that stuff because it gets blocked by the Great Firewall of China. <laughs> so there are expenses to run the show and, and your donations really help with that. And then advertising is going to go toward you know any uh, hardware expenses as we need them and we're going to need to invest in some uh, portable equipment this fall because we've got our fifth anniversary coming up. We're going to have to do the show from a remote location and uh, also just with the move and getting into a new space. Very excited about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have more information for you as we get closer to the time. Pretty so, sweet. Yeah. So thank you to everybody who does donate to the show. It means so much. And uh, I do try to thank you each personally, uh, especially those of you who donate on a regular basis. It's, it's hard to <laughs> pop you an email every single time you donate because it happens once a month and everything. And, and, but I want you to know that uh, it does make a big difference and we appreciate it very much. We certainly do. Mm -hmm. You're the best. It's all about the viewers, and it's really nice when, when you support us, for sure. Yeah, super meaningful. Yeah. It's also nice when we get viewer testimonials, because it's just a little bit of feedback. And, and that means a lot, too. Yeah. It means a huge amount to me to receive those. And we love hearing from people, too. Postcards like, and it's, viewer testimonials. Oh, yeah. oh we, got, we got loads of stuff. So just mm -hmm. hold on, people, because I got a bunch here. <laughs> okay, this one comes to us from Jot. Hi, after listening Jot. to Eric on the show, right. some of his songs didn't sound too good, but they were interesting. Oh, that job. he deserves the support. So um, he donated on the site towards Eric. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> you know Jot uh, well enough to know he's a little tongue-in-cheek, and he's saying, ah, I didn't really like the music, but I figured I'd give him money anyway. Which was very kind. Which, yeah, it was, but he's, he's that kind of a joker. Well, he goes we on to say it. then, after receiving the music and playing them, I found out that they suddenly sounded really a, a lot better. <laughs> I have to say, great music, Eric. I hope there will be more, because Eric is really, really talented. So that's from Jot. So thank you for Thanks, sending John. us that. I know Eric appreciates it, that's <laughs> for sure. We'll definitely pass it along certainly got another one here from clifford from hey, tennessee hi i have been following uh cat five since day one the difference um wow. from day one to the present is like black and white to color i notice small improvements with every installment what i really like is the form of the but the format is that it's loose and it's easy to follow the news is great to keep us up to date as to what's new and the adverts are believable as they um, are demonstrated in the show live, mistakes and all. I must comment on your sidekicks. They have graduated from white knuckles to very relaxed and comfortable. They are what makes the show so much more interesting. I, I look forward to a special coffee mug just... Oh, I'm looking for a special coffee mug just for you, Robbie. Oh, ah, that's so nice. You know me well, yeah. That's really nice. I appreciate nice. that. Look forward to receiving it. Um, keep up the great work. It's excellent. Oh, what is it that your daughter is saying at the end that has me scratching my head? <laughs> Some people have said that and like, what was that? What was that sound? That's actually my son, Zach. And at the end of the show, what is he saying? Do you know? He's saying cool beans. Cool beans. <laughs> I love that. It's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. I look forward to that after every show. Mystery solved. We, we unmute the speakers. <laughs> Just so we can hear it. Yeah. It's Crank pretty it funny. <laughs> so thank you for Thanks, your Clifford. message, Clifford. That yeah. was awesome. And one last one coming to us from Hong Zhang from China hey. in Shanghai. Hi, guys. I am a Chinese college student and also a Linux user. About half a year... Oh, I, I've read this before, but I'm reading it again. Sorry, I confused myself. About half a year well, ago... I think he, he sent an email at one point. But I, I don't think we've ever read oh, his... Oh, no, we haven't read his testimonial. Came in, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. This is a new testimonial. About half a year ago, I was sent to Germany due to a cooperative research project between Europe and China. That's when I discovered this amazing tech show called Category 5 Technology TV Online. I downloaded many episodes and enjoyed the show for most of my evenings I spent in Germany. Very but cool. what's really frustrating is that two months later, when I got back to China, the videos have been blocked by the government of mainland China, which means I can't watch the show anymore, either through the RSS feed or through the Flash player. Well, after a while, I sent you oh an email to express my frustration. There's the email. That's the email That's we it. got. That's the Things one. Things are suddenly becoming clear to me. Yeah. 
Um, but then you guys told me that you were building a new version of an RSS feed that would avoid the Great Firewall of China, <laughs> which would be released July 1st. How wonderful would that be? I simply cannot wait for the big days coming. Thanks, Robbie. I understand that this kind of thing must cost the team an extra... A uh, little extra money in finances. Thanks very much for what you guys have done for the Chinese viewers. As a fan of Cat Five, I will always support the show. Best regards. Pretty cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the update. And uh, yeah, I, I remember the email and, and we yes, had a bit I of a chat about too. That's the great. RSS feeds going into mainland China, and that's been going great, by the way. Uh, the system Sweet. is is running smoothly, and and uh, we're seeing some subscribers out in in China. So. Pretty Very cool. exciting. And nice to have you watching and interacting with the community as well. Um, I guess yeah, time zone-wise, it's, it's, it's 12 hours different, yeah. right? So <laughs> I can't see... Well, I guess you could well, you could maybe. get up early in the morning and 7 catch the show. It's possible. So it is. Yeah. But it's cool that you watch all the same and want yeah, to watch. Cheers. So that's nice pretty sweet. Nice to have sweet. you as a part of the show, for sure. Um, oh, I found another testimonial. Oh, great. And then I have one postcard I would like to share with you all. Okay. This comes to us from Shamil Ismail from India. Well, hello. Hi. I am a first-time viewer seeing this Category 5.tv. I am very much glad to see that this is the kind of channel, that there, that there, this sort of channel exists. Um, Category 5 TV is a very useful for people who love and like technology. The show of Robbie and Hillary is excellent. Oh, hope to see much in the system administration side. Thank you. Awesome. That's cool. Nice to have you watching, and thank you for yeah, the viewer testimonial. Yeah, that's so sweet. You can send in your viewer testimonials on our website, category5.tv. Click on the Interact menu, and you'll see the viewer testimonials there. Mm -hmm. We love to receive them. And you were saying you've got a postcard as well. Where does this come to I us from? I love to read the postcards and receive them. This comes uh, to us Scotland. from Scotland. Bonnie Scotland. Okay. Here begins the message in quotations. Ah, I the new... Question or quotation mark? Is that Och, is that I like the new? Is that like uh, saying? It must be. Oh, I the new. I can't do the accent. What, is, what does it mean? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Hiya's Robbie and the gang. A haggis and neeps. Now he's just playing with this us. This is so confusing. I don't understand this language. <laughs> um, turnip or Swede? I don't get it. Welcome from Edinburgh, Scotland, contingent from Bry Murray. Bry Murray, that part I, I recognize. I recognize that part, too. Hey, buddy. I wish I knew what Neeps and Ock I the New meant. I know what Haggis is. I do know what Haggis. Inside out, sheep stomach cooked. Sounds, guts. You make it sound so delicious. Mm, <laughs> fantastic. But thank you for the, the postcard. Whoops. We love getting them. It's really cool, actually, to Sent see. Sent to us right from Scotland. Yeah, it's, it's glorious. Would you look at that? Beautiful land. I'm supposed to say that. I'm a Ferguson. True say. Cool. Yeah, check that out. So, there... Oh, there... That's what I was looking for. There you go. That's... There yeah, it is. It's, it's tricky, though. We're, we're learning. There you Hard go. To orient yourself properly. It's, it's on a kilt. Da, ha, ha. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah, thanks for sending that in, bud. Pretty sweet. And, of course, you can send in your viewer uh, postcards, and that will help qualify you for upcoming contests and everything. Hillary, how can they send in their postcards? I'll tell you. Please address your postcards to Category 5 Technology TV, P.O. Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario, of course, in Canada, L4N7W7. Look forward to getting your postcards because we love snail mail. We do. It takes a long time to get here, but when it arrives, we're giddy. We're, we love it. Yeah. We hey, love you're going to be installing a hard drive tonight. That's exciting. I know you've yes, been looking forward to that, especially I... after last week's little install. I know. I'm. Look at me. I'm a pro. Gonna I'm installing be. all this stuff. It's wild. Yeah, we're going to be installing a solid-state hard drive in that Fit PC3. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Can't say too many vowels without coughing. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's what the Perrier is for. That's quite all yeah. right. Well, I'm looking forward to it because I need to improve my skills. Well, I'm, you know, my hardware skills. Do you? And my is software this, skills. Is this Rizzio? <laughs> uh, but seriously, what is that? This is the cutest thing. This core. I I went to uh, took the kids to the strawberry festival, and you wouldn't believe who was. Whose oh, band you was don't, playing? You don't say. Yeah, Eric Kidd was up on the big stage and playing oh. at the uh, Strawberry Festival at uh, Berry that Hill Farms. Is fun. Follow them on Twitter at Berry Hill Farms. But 
He gave us a button. That's super cute. How cool was that? I love it. You should, uh, you know, hound Eric Kid next time he's here at the studio. Hey, send me a button. Billy and the Kid. Billy and the Kid. Sure beats his other band name, I guess. (laughs) We'll just leave that. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, boy. All right, well, we, uh, we do have to take a quick break, Hillary, uh, and much, much, much to talk about. We've got viewer questions that have come in throughout the week, and we love to receive those as well. Um, join us in the chat room. We'd love to see you there. Hillary's got that up. I've got that up. And, of course, you can email us live at category5.tv. We'll be right back after this. At EcoAlkalines, we believe you should be able to trust your batteries not just here, but here, here, and here. But with one exception, you should also be able to trust your batteries here. EcoAlkalines are the world's first and only certified carbon neutral battery manufactured to the highest standards of recycling and quality, without any trace amounts of harmful chemicals like mercury, lead, or cadmium. EcoAlkalines provide performance that rivals leading national alkaline battery brands at a comparable price. Find out more about the EcoAlkalines difference. EcoAlkalines.com This is Category 5 Technology TV. We're going to take a really quick travel through time. So bear with us. We're going to jump back about nine episodes in the past here at Category 5. And then we're going to come right back to the future. And uh, we're going to see whether this worked or not. Here we go. Back to episode number 240 with myself and Rachel Shue. Garby says in the chat room, everybody, you got to remind me... Whatever it was that he needed a reminder for. I said, well, why don't you just future me it? And he said, what? Future me. Futureme.org. If ever you're in a situation where you think, well, I'd love to receive a note or maybe someone could give me a reminder, head on over to futureme.org, which is a fantastic service. It's freely available. All you need to do is enter your email address live at category5.tv. Put in a subject. Hello from the past. And then you're just going to enter an email just like you're writing it to (laughs) to yourself. Hey, Robbie. Did you do that thing with that thing? That sounds wrong. Thanks. Oh, Rachel, you're (laughs) terrible. Terrible. (laughs) So do you use this all the time like... Hey, Robbie, you're looking good today. (laughs) Yeah, I use it to encourage myself and boost myself up. Hey, Robbie, you look fantastic. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, you can, you know, if that that makes you feel good, then go ahead, you know. Okay, did you program that computer that you were going to program, you dirty, dirty girl? All right, thanks from Robbie. Okay, so when do you want to deliver this email? It's going to go way into the future. I mean, it's defaulting to 2013. I can deliver it anytime I want. And I'll stand by this program because I know that this has been here for many, many years. Okay, honestly, who needs a reminder in 2031? I think it falls under the category of time capsule. I think it's like, you know, um, hey, hope you got that job promotion you were working on. Or, you know, you keep your chin up. or It could be whatever. It could be encouragement to yourself. It could be a reminder that, hey, you know, because it doesn't have to be 2013. That was like, I got a letter from the government saying uh, I had to uh, send them an update in 2030. Oh, really? And I thought, why are they telling me now as if I'm going to remember in 2030 I'm May. supposed to send them this? Oh, dear. Yeah, that's <sighs> kind of crazy. Okay, May 1st, 2012. That's next Tuesday night. Uh, it's going to be delivered at any time during that. I'm going to say, hey, uh, have a great show, Robbie. All right. There's my future me message. Do I want to add a picture? Nah. Are you human? E H D K three. There we go. So now with futureme.org, I'm ready to send that message into the future. Sent. Oh, send date must be at least 30 days into the future. All right. Well, that's not so bad. Well, that's lame. Well, because what if you have something you want to do tomorrow or next week? I don't or think it's really a calendaring system. Weeks. I think it's, it's emailing the future you. And so uh, thirty days makes sense. So let's let's just pick a Tuesday night uh, in more. So than if you get days. lonely in thirty days, you'll get a special little message yeah. from you. Okay, let's say June twenty sixth. All right, so everybody make note: June twenty sixth of this year. I'm going to receive that nice little message. It says, have a great show. All right? Am I human? 
I'm surprised the date doesn't end after 2012. No, it goes all the way to 2062 because they're assuming that the internet and the world is still going to be here. There we go. All right. Send to the future. Gone. The future says thanks for the letter. That is very pleasant of the future to say. Okay, so here we are. It is June 26th. It is. Back in the studio here. You saw it there on April 24th, 2012. And lo and behold, in my inbox (gasps) came a message from futureme.org. It arrived at 10.08 this morning, and it says, The following is an email from the past. Composed two months and one day ago on April 24th, 2012. It is being delivered from the past through futureme.org. And there's my message. Hey, Robbie, have a great show. Thanks, Robbie. Well, <laughs> I just want to say thanks, Robbie, for wishing us a great show. And, uh, <laughs> and very cool. That's, That's futureme.org. Awesome. Send stuff to yourself in the future. I like that ah. a lot. I do like it. And I like this show. You're Aww. watching Category 5 TV. And Category 5 TV is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. And the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Thanks, Hill. Visit our mobile website, m.cat5.tv. So nice. (laughs) And uh, also just a uh, reminder that this Sunday we're launching our brand new website here at Category 5. Of course, Hong Zhang was uh, excited that we're going to be launching the RSS feeds directly in China with the alternate feeds. But there is a lot more to the uh, the brand new website than just that as well. Very excited to be launching that. It's going to make things much, much faster. And we're going to be able to handle the capacity that Category 5 is seeing. Because I don't know if you realize, but we were averaging about sixty to 90,000 views per episode. Crazy. Yeah. And we're, up t- we're wow. at about 280,000 views per episode right now. So f- in the past year we we've seen that kind of growth so as far as traffic on the website goes it it's pretty heavy folks Unreal. pretty Holy. heavy so so we're you know the v3 website the new website that launches on sunday july 1st is a big part of the venture to be able to accommodate our mm-hmm. wonderful viewers uh, that's you so that you don't get errors when you visit our website so that things just work because uh there's a lot of capacity f- to fulfill so sweet we like it when things work we do. We don't like... Yeah, it looks bad on me if things don't work. <laughs> you know, here's the guy telling us how, you know, yeah, oh, how, how does happens. stuff work? And, and then it doesn't work, and then it's just kind of bad. <laughs> so, hey. Oh, boy. We've well, only got a couple minutes to do uh, to get into yeah, your viewer questions, but we're going to do our I best. Got, I got some right here, mm. and hopefully Robbie can tell us how to make this work. Okay. Okay. We will try. This comes to us from Dan. Hey, Dan. What do they mean when they ask if my server is secure? I have Apache, PHP with PHP my admin. Well, by they, I must assume that we're talking about the men in black. The men. The man. The man that brings us down. Hmm. The man. Okay. Haven't you heard of that? So when they're talking about secure. Yeah, okay, go ahead. (laughs) I'm talking about the man. The man bringing you down. Okay. Okay. So anyways. um, (laughs) Okay. He's got Apache. PHP, okay. my admin, and my SQL. Mm-hmm. Doesn't it come hardened out of the box? Okay. If server setup isn't pre-hardened, um, what steps do I need to take to get the server secured? And does it involve just installing modules? I've been asking questions that might take a whole segment to answer. But uh, anyways, also, okay, what does he say here? Quick aside, buddy guy is blues, not country. If anything, <laughs> is the devil's music, it's country. Cheers from Dan. Oh, done. P.S. at Garby M&Ms are a great choice. They don't melt in your hand, therefore they don't transfer to the keyboard. Smile face. Cool. Inside joke of some sort. Back to the issue. A couple of them. Okay, so what do they mean when they okay. say secure? Perry is a great thing, but I'm, I'm seriously picturing myself in the middle of a discussion here and just belching <laughs> all of a sudden, and I really don't want it's that to happen. carbonated water. So if I'm like, mm, <laughs> bad idea, carbon, all right. Um... Okay, so when they say, when they, the men in black and the uh, the aliens and all those mm. entities and everything say that your ser- server needs to be secure, um, basically, without getting into the technical end of things, because we can't get into real server administration, but you, what they're probably talking about is SSL, 
um, like secure encrypted connection mm. to your end user because you're you're thinking along the lines here and rightly so we're hosted on a Linux computer which is generally fairly secure as far as you understand it but are you connecting to it by FTP which is insecure people can intercept that and access your password and everything like that mm. or are you using SSH or SFTP which is FTP over SSH which is secure mm. so that's secure versus insecure for file transfers if a customer is saying, well, do you offer secure web hosting? Well, what they're talking about then is, okay, well, I want to do e-commerce, for example, where people are going to be giving their credit card information on the website that I'm creating or mm -hmm. hosting. So do you offer the ability to encrypt that data flow? When you go to your, your bank's website, when you do online banking, you see that it's a secure certificate. You get that little lock and key up in the, in the corner of the screen or something. So what that means is that you have that secure encrypted connection. That requires what's called an SSL certificate, a static IP address, and you have to register that IP address with an SSL authority. Um, so you actually have to purchase that. It's a certificate. Oh. It's like a, an encryption key, mm. and uh, that gives you the ability to offer uh, secure SSL connections to your server. That's most likely what they're talking about, I would Okay. Think. Yeah. So... The, what does he say then? So, okay, what steps does he need to take then to well, just get the certificate? You find mean? find a certificate uh, uh, authority that uh, that you want to work with oh. um, to to purchase your your certificate. I could tell you, you know, uh, there there are many out there. Let's just see here. I'll just grab one. Just for an example. Yeah, just for an example. Here we go. I'll just bring up a website here. Bring up the certificate. Uh, certificate information, GeoTrust, Inc. So to purchase from them, and your web ho if you're if you're hosting it yourself, then that's one thing. GeoTrust.com sells SSL certificates, right? So you can you can get that here, buy SSL. Even have something called a free trial. I don't know what that is, but anyways, that's uh, that's probably the first place I would start is okay. GeoTrust. That makes sense. They sound trustworthy. No, I actually use them for some of the SSL sites that I run. So. Okay. Okay. Good example. Thank you. Cheers. Fabulous. Thanks for the question. Good luck. I, it is a little tricky, but there are lots of forums and things to help you with it. And GeoTrust may even be able to assist to some degree as well. Hmm. Good question. I'm wondering, should we do some news or should we do another question? One more question. Okay. I, I need to get a question in here, Hill. Okay. We're just going to just pack it in there at the last three minutes <laughs> before the news. Okay. Here we go. This comes to us from Medi. Hey, Medi. Dear friend, my laptop is a Sony Vio. Recently, I upgraded from Ubuntu 11.10 to 12.04. Okay. After installation, when I rebooted the system, the problem is now that I'm, I'm not getting a home screen and what appears to just be a black screen with a cursor. I also have Windows mm. installed on the same machine. Please let me know what I should be doing okay. to use Ubuntu again. That could be a few different things. My The first thing that comes to mind is if you used a CD media, if you burnt a CD, for example. I want to make sure that the uh, the ISO file that you burnt from was still good. There's that Perrier. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, if it did it, what I'd want to know is, did you by any chance use just the automatic upgrade process through like the uh, disk upgrade on apt-get, or did you like did you start with it and then upgrade through the repositories, or did you actually reinstall? That would be uh, that would be a deciding factor. Are are they joining us in the chat room by chance? I'm not would love sure. to know, but so hard to say. I would say that uh, you know my first my first concern would be that if you had a bad ISO and you were and you burnt it to a CD and then you installed without verifying the uh, the MD5 checksum, it may have installed a, a botched copy. Could be fixed maybe using like su super grub disk or something like that. Uh, I'll post the link in the show notes for episode number two, 249. Um, but I would say, you know, reinstalling the Ubuntu portion, if that's an option, I might suggest getting a, a new a new ISO download, verify the MD5, check some, and, uh, and then re, re, -burn, re uh reinstall just that partition, if that's possible. But send us some more information if that's, you know, if that's not, if I'm not on the right track. It depends on how you went about the install and what the actual problem is. But 
um, could be video drivers. Um, you may be able to, at the grub menu, hit the letter E and edit the grub entry and make some modifications there. Maybe use a VESA driver or something, force a VESA driver, or edit your XORG. So there's so much stuff, right? Sorry, dude. So try a few things and then report yeah. back, and maybe we can m better pinpoint the mm -hmm. problem. Get into the chat room at Category5.tv. Lots of wonderful community members here, and we'd love to help you. There's the forum at forum.cat5, or forum.category5.tv is another place. And, of course, there's the Ubuntu forums, which is the ultimate place to get help mm -hmm. when it comes to Ubuntu. Very cool. Give All it a right. whirl. Let us know how yeah. you make out. Good luck, and do please let us know. All right. Mm -hmm. Hillary. It's that time. It's the time. Here are the top news stories from the Category 5.tv newsroom. Twitter has blamed a cascading bug for rendering the social networking site oh. inaccessible on Thursday. A cascading bug. There you have it. What'll they say next? <laughs> Users from around the world reported difficulties logging on to the site after problems started at about 1700 BST. What's BST? Do you know? No. Now that I think about it, I don't actually know. I don't know what BST is. I know what DST is. I know what ES. Bermuda is. savings time? I don't know. If you know, let us know. Bug. Cascading so bug. Anyway, sometimes time. Thursday. Sometime on Thursday, yeah. Thursday o'clock. Those crazy cascading bugs. <laughs> <laughs> the service was affected for around two hours while engineers sought to solve the issue. In a blog post, Twitter dismissed reports that it had been hacked and offered its sincere apologies to its users. Cascading bug is one with an effect that isn't confined to a particular software element, but rather its effects cascade into other elements as well, explained Mazin Ra... Rawashide, the site's vice president of engineering. <laughs> One of the characteristics of such a bug is that it can have a significant impact significant impact on all users worldwide, which was the case today. This goes on to say that as soon as we discovered it, we took corrective actions, which included rolling back to a previous stable version of Twitter. I would have just got a fly swatter. Whack that cascading bug out of the way. Just get rid of it. Raid. <laughs> 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 Moving onwards, a Google research team has trained a network of 1,000 computers wired up like a brain to recognize cats. The team built a neural network, which mimics the working of a biological brain, that worked out how to spot pictures of cats in just three days. Wow, way to go, fake brain. <laughs> the cat's body computer was created as a part of a larger project to investigate machine learning. Google is planning to use the learning system to help with its indexing, in, mm, indexing systems and with language translation. What is interesting about it, though, is that this this machine, super machine or whatever, actually had the thought processes to say, okay, I'm going to set out to see cats. That's bizarre. And then just generated a list of tons and tons of cat pictures. It's, it's really fascinating. What's next? Oh, thousand computer brain machine from google reminds me of cat club cat when, club. I went, when i went to college but that's another story for another day they had a cat club maybe i'll tell was you was it hosted later. by the cat lady no worse right. than the cat lady oh dear okay web users in india are once again able to access video and file sharing sites including the pirate bay the country's uh M madra madras high court has changed its earlier censorship in order um to sorry i lost my train of thought they changed the, the censorship order and which centered around the issue of the internet copyright the original ruling made indian internet service providers isp um, block access to the entire sites to prevent a single phone from being shared online the new order was issued following an appeal filed by the consortium of isps it states that only specific web addresses, URLs, carrying the pirated content should be blocked, but not the entire website. Hmm. That makes a little more sense. I think so. Gotta say. Yeah. Block the content, not the, the, the site. The concern that I have over censorship really is not... It's the, it's the accidental distributor. Like if, if I, for example, we did a show and we mentioned a particular website or a, a viewer mentioned a website and we put it in our show notes... Not, we've never looked at the website. We've never crawled through the pages. We don't know if they have something yeah, that they're know. distributing that we don't know about, right? Mm -hmm. So should that make us get blocked? I don't know. That's just the thing. Yeah. Talking about an issue as 
an issue, but then are you perpetuating the issue? Possibly. This is very confusing. I am so confused. Oh. Well, lastly, our last story of the day. Google Map users may soon find it easier to plan a trip on some of England and Wales waterways. The U.S. search engine has teamed up with the Canal and River Trust, a charity that will be in charge of the two countries' water network from July. Mm -hmm. The deal includes updating Google Maps to include 2,000 miles of canal and river paths. Currently, waterways are not listed on Google Maps as active routes people can use to move about. Well, fair enough. I want want to see Google (laughs) Water View. That's next. Underneath. Who knows? <laughs> okay, you can get these full stories online at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from our awesome community of viewers. If you have a story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. I'm Hillary, and that's the news. Thanks, Hill. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online www.category5.tv and tonight's show is of course brought to you in part by GardenGateFarms.com for certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice (coughs) visit GardenGateFarms.com also Cordery Electric the official electrical company of Category 5 TV visit them online at www.CorderyElectric.com alright ready to get your hands dirty on some uh, some hardware hacks Pitter patter. It's not really. Let's a hack. get at her. We're not gonna do any dremeling or anything crazy like that. Okay. <laughs> well, we've been looking at this Fit PC, the Fit PC3. You can find out more about it at cat5.tv/fit. F-I-T. Can you believe this is actually a PC computer? No, I don't believe this is, it. Well, it looks like a router, doesn't it? It it's does. It's got all the kind of stuff that you would expect from a router. This is. I'm just looking at the base here. 1.65 gigahertz dual core. APU. Whoa. It's got a Radeon HD 6320 graphic card, 2 gigs of RAM. It's got, uh, let's see, a 250 gig hard drive with Linux Mint uh, already installed. Whoa. Dual Wi Fi antennas. It's got BGN, Bluetooth 3 and 4, and a couple, well, four USB Whoa. at the front, two USB 3 at the back, cool. two more USB 2, Ethernet. Uh, that looks like Display Port, wow. two ESATA, and one HDMI as well. Would you look at that? HDMI, Display Port, got it. Oh, okay. I thought that was a router. Cool. It looks like it, doesn't it? So what we're actually going to do, we're going to get a close up here so that you can Ooh, really see go, what this thing looks like. This is there's n- there's no moving parts in here except for the hard drive. So tonight, what we're going to set out to do, Hillary, we're going to eliminate that one moving part. We're going to throw a cheap SSD hard drive into this device just to see how difficult or how easy this really is. Hmm. How heavy is this? It is pretty heavy. I don't know if you want to give that sure. a, a feel, Hill. Heavier than you would anticipate. Yes. But not uber heavy. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like five or six pounds. Yeah. Give or take. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, Hillary, we're going to pull these antennas off, which just are standard, you know, screw on. I think they call them SMC or something like that, antennas for Wi-Fi. What's nice about having this ability is that you can get uh, decibel boosters. You can plug in bigger antennas. You can plug in outside antennas, whatever, you know. But there you have it. There's the back of it. So I'm going to I'm gonna actually let you once oh again. Oh, boy. Gonna, yeah, you know. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We got a screwdriver. That's all you need. It's so and lovely. I picked up this thing. I mean, you can get SSD hard drives for so cheap these days. This is just an 8 gigabyte. But what we're going to do, the reason that I've got such a small hard drive, it's only 40 bucks. It's solid state. It means we're going to have absolutely no moving parts. There are no fans because, as you saw here, it's this whole thing compact. is actually a heat sink. Hmm. So it distributes the heat evenly and gives you a, a nice, cool system, even though there are no fans. That's incredible. So by removing the hard drive and putting in a solid-state drive, now you could go with a bigger hard <coughs> pardon me, a bigger hard drive. We're just going to go with a small one because we're going to create this as, essentially, this is going to become a solid-state server that's going to connect to a separate storage device. It's got cool. SATA. Go ahead and yeah, okay, take out I've that one started, screw. I started, but I wanted everyone to and know that I can do it. You started with the right screw, it. too. Well done. I'm not a total goofball. Okay. But there a we partial go. one. So follow the arrows. It's pretty straightforward. This arrow? Yeah. So that is the, actually physically the hard drive. So you're, you're dismounting the hard drive. 
as you're doing that. So, so yeah, give okay. it a bit of a pressure because you're actually unplugging gonna... the hard drive. There you go. Oh, okay. And then you can lift up at the far end and just flip that over and you can see that that is the spinning hard drive that came with the unit. So we've got the RAM modules down here, the Wi-Fi chip, and you can see the motherboard and everything like that. So there are four screws that are on this mounting... Oh, yep, four. Four screws that are okay. on this mounting bracket. What, what I'll get you to do is I'll get you to sure. remove those screws, and at the same time, I'm going to get into this packaging. Okay. For the, uh, this is a Kingston 8GB SSD now. 40 bucks. I mean, it was just a cheap SSD hard drive to get us entirely solid state. So with this system now, what we're experimenting with, and what I want you to try with the FitPC cat5.tv slash fit, is you're actually able to, you know, here we're going to create a solid state server alternative. So it generates very, very little heat. It uses very, very little power. Cool. And it can connect into uh, our main server. So Neat. whether you have a... Uh, you know, let's say uh, I've got an Unraid box, if you've got a, a free NAS box or network attached storage or something that you want to use for your hard drive space, Oops. then great. If cool. you've got a, uh, you know, a, a, an external RAID unit that you want to just plug directly in through SATA, that's fine too. Okay, here we go. And I have done all my unscrewing. Okay, so now here's the new hard drive. This mm -hmm. is solid state, so that means there are no moving parts. We're going to take out the moving part hard drive. Okay. This is the old style kind with the spinning yes. platter. Okay, and the the needles and all that. And here we go. That's just gonna go right in there. All right, I can right. handle that. Okay, let's can, bring it right in can here. Handle that. Look at me. Easy I'm breezy. Doing it. No so big the, deal. The SATA ports on this device are actually built into the chassis. You can see they're right here. The header is actually the back plane, and it's built into, you know, it's, it's kind of integrated into the aluminum chassis. So when we put that back in here, it's actually, sliding that in is actually going to make the connection to the back plane. Oh Any other questions in the chat room? This is a great time. It is. Nice thing again about this is that it's, it can be headless. We can just put it in a back room somewhere, and it becomes a very powerful server. You consider servers are not usually the most powerful as far as speed goes, computers. But here we've got a system that is, what did I say, 1. 1. 1.65 gigahertz. Hmm. Okay. Wild. So essentially we're just going to, now we've got that solid state hard drive mm -hmm. now. We just put that in there. And there you go. I put it the right way up, right? So well, what yeah, if somebody so. lesser lesser than I. Just kidding. Well, we put it in the, put it the so same way that... Face. Yeah, we put it in the same way that we took out the other drive. Just wanted to double check. And it's only going to go one way, because the hard drive actually... See if I can show you on this one. <laughs> That's difficult. The camera's backwards to us. It's inverted. So the, the screw hole is closer to this edge than okay. it is to this edge. I see. So if I were to accidentally put that in upside down, the screw hole is going to be too far away from the actual screw hole, okay. if that makes sense. Mm, so that wanna, makes sense. Sure. want to mount that into the uh, Fit PC3? Certainly. There you go. So we're switching this to a solid state device. So you want to lay the, down the drive flat first and then slide it across. It's going to snap right into the back plane. There you go. Then Put in the one screw. So this particular device now, we can ins we're going to install Debian Linux. Uh, on Oops. a future show, we and we're also going to, now with Debian Linux on there, we're going to put a LAMP stack, which is Linux, hmm. Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So we're going to basically turn this thing into a dreamy little web server, and done and done, it's solid state, we can put it anywhere, there you go, nice and snug, you did a great job. Thank you. Cool. I did it. I'm, I'm awaiting the next step, but it was so easy. We did it in like three steps. That was easy. The Fit PC can be found and had at cat5.tv slash fit, F-I-T. Again, hard to believe that it's an actual full-fledged computer, mm -hmm. and it is desktop worthy That's as wild. far as its HD graphics. If you want to do gaming on it, fine. Whoa. Great. We're going to go the server route the first time around. We're going to do some experimenting with this. We're going to have a lot of fun with this over the next little while because, hey, we can. We can Why play not? around, see what it's capable of, and uh, that's step one. We're going to turn this puppy into a nice little... Apache server. Cool. Yeah. Antennas on. 
Oh, yeah. I forgot to put the antennas back on. There we go. But there's just so easy. Just screw back on. It takes like two seconds. There are multiple different models of the Fit PC. People asking about pricing. You can get the pricing right off of their website, cat5.tv slash fit. And uh, there are the different models available there. You can see the pricing. And there are, uh, there are other units provided by the company as well. So do check it out. Highly cool. recommend it, and uh, I've been using it as. Now, what I did is I, I put um, a virtual machine with Linux, Debian Linux, on uh, VirtualBox on the Fit PC. Okay. So the host OS was Linux Mint that came stock out of the box, and then the guest OS was Debian with um, basically my rsync script and backup service, uh, mm. everything that synchronizes to my offsite backup, and I basically just took my Offsite backup system, which is that great big server that I showed you last yes. time we looked at the Fit PC, that basically eats up a lot of power, <laughs> and I put it on this thing, which uses only 11 watts of power with the spinning drive. Crazy. Now, I have a feeling when we test this next time, now that we've got a solid state hard drive in there, the power consumption is even going to be lower yeah. than it was before. That's cool. So very, very excited about the cost savings as far as uh, power and hydro goes, and the fact that it is entirely solid state now means that uh, it's going to get some very, very good life. That's we don't have any moving cool. parts to maintain. Yeah. You might run a vacuum over once in a while to get the dust off. Just in case, but... There you go. Wow, very cool. Yeah. And I did it. You did it. Did it. Well done. Sweet. Thank you. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online, www.category5.tv. So nice to have you here. Mm -hmm. Very excited about our new website that launches this Sunday. Make sure you check it out first and, for you know, get on there Sunday afternoon if you want. Uh, get on there Monday and take a look at the website. And, uh, oh, so, so excited about it. Woohoo! And, of course, uh, Canada Day coming up. Happy Canada Day to uh, all of our Canadian friends. Nice to have you here as mm -hmm. well. We're based in Barrie, Ontario here, and uh, happy to be Canadian. True say. Mm -hmm. So, let's see. We are going to look at recovering photos. I'm going to have a sip of my water here. Yes. We're going to learn how to get your pictures off your your memory card that went mega funk, <clears throat> or you accidentally deleted it, or like the files are corrupt, or unreadable. Let's figure out how to do this, because... Stuff like this happens to me all the time. Yeah. And I don't know who is this somebody's camera? This is my daughter's camera. I mean, I'm a daddy. And so I deal with this all the time. Corrupt <laughs> camera cards because what are kids notorious for? It's the one thing that I'll say never ever do when you're using digital cameras. Running down the battery all the way tells you that the battery's low and yet what do you do? You want to get that last picture so you turn it on again. <laughs> There's not enough power to power the camera, so what happens? file system corruption. Mm. You'll lose everything on your camera card. Try to get that through to a seven-year-old. <laughs> Doesn't get it. <laughs> so we've got uh, the camera card is just a, a standard SD card, and we're going to learn tonight how to recover the data from a corrupted card, or perhaps you've mm -hmm. deleted the files by accident. You know, Tally will be working here, and there's a little delete can, a trash can button for the for the photos. And, easy, whoops, easy to I push. I push that instead of going right, for example, and that's happened before, too. So Daddy is the hero because Daddy knows how to use PhotoRec, which is a part of Test Disk Suite. Ooh. It's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac, and uh, it is a free piece of software. We're going to try it on Linux today. We're going to learn cool. how to do that. So I've got the camera card already plugged into the computer. I've confirmed Perfect. that. It's right there. Perfect. So if I look at my computer, there's my camera card. It is empty. What did I do? I went through, and I actually deleted all the photos on that disk. How could you? Oh, the humanity. I can't believe it. But it's okay, because I have faith in PhotoRec. Okay, first and foremost, I'm going to create a folder on my desktop. I'm going to call this Recovered. There you go. Zero items, because currently there's nothing in it. Oh. And you know, there's nothing in my on my disk either. Okay? So I'm going to go... I'm going to do this in Terminal, folks, because that would be fun. You can do this through Synaptic Package Manager if you want. Of course, if you're on Windows or Mac, we will post the link in the show notes for episode number 249 so you can download a copy for your operating system. So, sudo apt-get update. It's going to get the latest lists from the repositories. There we go. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Sip some water. There we go. Okay. 
Not worried about that error, don't worry. Sudo apt-get install. Here's what you gotta remember. It's not called photo rec in, in apt-get. It's called test disk. It's a part of the test disk suite, mm. which is a free data recovery suite. So I've gone sudo apt-get install test disk. I'm zoomed in so close I can't see, and it's moving up. There it is. Okay. So it just went at it. It's not even asking me any questions. It's just going at it. There we go. Okay. Now, at your terminal here, with the disk plugged in and an empty folder on my desktop, I'm going to type in the word photo rec. It does require sudo, but I wanted to demonstrate for you a couple of the neat features about this. First of all, it detects that the window's not big enough, so please enlarge the window. So I'm going to create, create a bigger window. It automatically has fixed it, and it says no hard disks found. What does it say? You need to be root to use photo rec. So down at the bottom, you can actually push enter to force a sudo, which is to create a super user environment. If you haven't already entered your password this session, it would have prompted. All I had to do was press enter. So I'm seeing my SDA, that's my internal hard drive. SDB is another internal hard drive. And then SDC is my one gigabyte card hmm. from the camera. So I'm gonna click enter. Please select the partition type. You can select it if you know it. I'm gonna suggest that we allow a sector-by-sector -sector scan, which means we're going to tell PhotoRec that there is no partition. We're just going to hmm. allow you to read every single sector. That way, if partitions were deleted, if we're looking at for files that were on an old format, uh, you'll still be able to recover those. So here we go. I'm going to go none type of partition. It's automatically defaulted to FAT16 because most likely it's detected that that's what it is. But again, same reason, I want to go unknown. Okay, because what does it do? It's going to scan the whole disk rather than partition by partition. Enter. <clears throat> now this is important. What type of file system do you think it was? Was it a Linux file system, ext2, 3, or 4? Or was it something else, such as FAT or NTFS, which are Windows and DOS formats, HFS Plus, which is Mac, ReaserFS, which is uh, a Linux file system, so I'm going to select other because this is my camera. I know that my camera is most likely a FAT, FAT32, or FAT16 file system. Okay, so that's the default we're going to choose. It's called other. Hit enter. Now the next step is saying, where do you want to save it? You just scroll down to your desktop. Scroll over to recovered is the folder that I created. See, there's the recovered folder mm -hmm. on my desktop. Enter. And now, what do you do? Simply over here, it's described here. You just want to press Y which is basically saying, okay, yes, I am in the folder that I want to save the files to. Mm -hmm. Important note about PhotoRec is, what did I do? I first of all selected the source medium, which was my camera card. Mm -hmm. Now I'm selecting a destination medium, and you notice that the destination medium is my, on my desktop. Yes. So I am never writing anything Over, to the disk. Yeah. So I'm not going to overwrite any sectors. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lose access to that data because sector by sector is going to be copied to my internal hard drive, never overwriting the camera card. Smart. Very, very important, and some data recovery software won't, won't, won't let you? encourage oh. that. Hmm. Sometimes they'll recover to the same medium, which is crazy. Silly. I think those are the, you know, the, the free ones, the <laughs> malware ones, the ones that you want to stay away from. Don't go into Google and type free data recovery <laughs> software because you're bound to get a virus, I guarantee oh, you. Oh my goodness. Okay. With PhotoRec, on the other hand, we're ready to go. Step by step, we walked through it. We're going to press Y. Here it goes, scanning the whole disk. Whoa. Estimated time, 42 seconds. Not bad. Not too shabby, I'd Let's say. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> this is incredible. We need, like, intense music. I know. Dun -dum, dun -dum, dun -dum, dun -dum, dun this is going sector by sector through that one gigabyte disk. And I, I kind of want to leave this up on the screen, as, as boring as it seems right now. <clears throat> it's exciting if it works. Because <laughs> remember, we're scanning a disk that is entirely empty. I had deleted all the photos from that disk. So we've got a couple seconds left, five seconds left is the estimate. Oh, now it's going, oh, it's going for another pass, and it's got 50 seconds. Oh, okay. No files found. Oh, oh. Moment of truth, the hardest thumping, because you know we love to do things live here. <laughs> we do. We want to know, does it work? Does it really work? Or this is PhotoRec, a part of the test disk suite. It's absolutely free and available for Linux, Windows, or Mac. 
and of course you can install it right from your repositories using the test disk uh, meta package. There's one JPEG has been recovered, two JPEGs recovered, cool. two files saved into my recovered recoup directory, recovery completed. So it has so, gone through, well, moment of truth, let's check on it out. my desktop, let's jump into that recovered folder. I've got this new one called recoupdir.1. What do we have? Lo and behold. <laughs> Would you look at that? It's Hillary's girl band. <laughs> there I am. Look at that. Neon and crazy hair. We were talking about this last week <laughs> and I said, you know, if I could ever find the photos and then somebody went and deleted them. How and dare now, they? And now, there we go. She looks like, a, a, well, you all look like you're rocking it out. We we were. We were yeah. definitely rocking out and the smoke machine going and the yeah. lights and... Boy, oh, oh boy. I tell good times. You. Now, Hillary, that's all fine and good. That's fantastic. Beautiful picture. Really well done. I'm sure the concert was amazing. <laughs> but I need you to explain something to me. What <laughs> on earth? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Please. Just okay. enlighten uh, us. <laughs> Sometimes there are no words. However, that's kind of that's where I was going with it. Yeah. <laughs> if you must know, as I work at the camp, I yes. get in touch with my inner child, and you have to be silly for the ki- for the kids. <laughs> for the kids. For the children. It's for the kids. And um, that's my sister, and she is dressed up as Miss Piggy, and I'm Kermit oh, the yes. Frog. Oh, brilliant! And you're hopping. Yeah. Or flying. I, uh, she kind of looks like she could be up, <laughs> up, and away. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Oh, that's amazing, Hill. Thanks for the laugh. Oh, no problem. So we actually recovered those pictures. They I'm were deleted. Gl- I'm glad we recovered them because it's, the world had oh, to see. So glad that we didn't that. lose those. Yeah. She's probably like, I wish that thing didn't work. Stupid photo Darn wreck. Things too. <laughs> Too good. Oh, boy, That's oh, boy. That's super funny. <laughs> well, I'm glad we recovered those, and I'm glad you were able to see them. World. The entire World <laughs> Wide Web was able to see that. <laughs> there we go. Well, thanks for being a good sport, and uh, that that is just that is an amazing tool. Photo Very rec. cool. Works a lot of the time. It's not just for photos either, but document files, hmm. videos. If you take videos with your camera, okay. you can even recover those. Uh, I highly recommend the Test Disk Suite. <clears throat> As I said, I'll post uh, links in the show notes for episode number 249. But just so you know, if you're watching this live, it's cgsecurity.org. The letter cgsecurity.org. And you'll find Test Disk there. But the, the deep link is slash wiki slash Test Disk with a capital T, capital D. Hmm. And there you have it. All Download info. binaries. Oh, it's got other OSs as well. I didn't realize Sun, uh, BSD, but I guess that's kind of all a given. But good stuff. Very cool. You have fun tonight? I did have yeah. fun. I always yeah. have fun. That did you have fun tonight? <laughs> they Hope did. So. The entire audience of the world did yeah. have fun. <laughs> I know it. I know they did. And the chat room is hilarious. I'm just reading some of the comments. I love your chat room. They're so fun <laughs> and funny. So... It's not easy being green. They're all talking about Kermit. Kermit. I, that photo, I tell you. Well, stay tuned, world, because this summer, you don't even know what craziness I'll be up to. She's got a video camera now, folks. You don't know. <laughs> you don't even know. Just, that's all I'm saying. That's a little teaser. <laughs> Ooh, stay tuned. We've got, uh, we, we're constantly getting uh, a, a lot of your viewer questions, and, and I apologize that we're unable to get to everyone every show, but we we do our mm-hmm. best to, you know, roll them over if we didn't get the, to them this week. So know that if you did send an email, if you sent in a question, we weren't able to attend to it. We are going to do our best to get to it over the next couple of shows. So uh, thank you for being here. No I guess problem. camp is starting up. and We'll be starting be away shortly, so you might not see me so much, mm-hmm. but uh, I'll be here in spirit. Mm. And possibly in other ways. So our f- our fifth tuned. anniversary show coming up. You're going to be there for that. Pretty wild. The wedding is coming up. Oh yeah. The birthday is coming up. I mean, oh, there's yeah. so much going on. This is quite the. Who quite has the time month. for a birthday when you have all these other things on the yeah. go? Like You'll just, it'll just, just crazy. go by. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, also, of course, next time you're here, it's quite possible that we'll be in the new studio. That's true. So it won't actually be here. Pretty crazy. Cool stuff. Don't forget, new website this Sunday. Hillary, great to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. And thank you for tuning in once again on the best show on the planet, Category 5. Mm. (laughs) 
I'm, I, I still want to say, get your postcards in this week. Hillary was mentioning the address at the top of the show, or earlier on in mm-hmm. the show. It's at the bottom of our website. But do remember, we have an, another Magic Jack with a full year service. Ooh. I'm talking free, long distance, Hello. anywhere in Canada or the U.S. Sounds right? good to me. All expenses paid for an entire year. You can call anywhere in Canada, U.S., no fees, and you'll have your, your telephone service provided for you. We're giving that away. You've got to either give us a call, 254-522-8588. That's 254-5-CAT5-TV. Mm. Give us a call. Leave us a voicemail telling us why you think that you would uh, that you should win a Magic Jack, what you'd like to do with it. And that's the Magic Jack Plus, I should say. And also let us know who you are, where you're calling from. Otherwise, send us a postcard just like uh, like Brian Murray did this week. And that, no, you see I've added it to the pile here because we're going to shuffle those up and those are going to be included Ooh, in the cool. contest. Very so cool. you're going to have a chance to win if you send us a postcard too. So get those in this week. We'd love to receive them. Again, the address is at the bottom of our website, category5.tv. Hope you have a great summer. Thank you. Awesome. Pound Fun it. times. Take Peace care, everybody. Out. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.